I mean, you know the rules of the game. I mean, your bitch just chose me. Now, we can settle this like you got some class, so we can get into some gangster shit. Rock Marciano is just as elusive as his raps. He'll disappear and reappear, then dissing them most with the flow, rapping in pockets you never knew existed, over instrumentation that some would say is an acquired taste. But this just underscores his distinct artistic palette. He may be the greatest MC producer combo we've ever seen in hip hop. He's the underground's undisputed king, and we may have yet to see his best work. When he released the critically acclaimed Elephant Man Bones in the summer of 2022, my initial thought was, when Rock Marciano dies, they're gonna study his bones. Think about it and understand. Rock Marciano's ascension into hip hop royalty started in the early 90s, around the age of 14. This is when he would come across Public Enemy producer Kerwin Sleek Young, who was so impressed by the teenager's rapping skills, he invited him to Public Enemy studio. Not able to produce yet, Marcy would tape record jazz and soul radio stations at home, then give it to producers and tell them how he wanted it to sound. In other words, the little nigga was a genius. Fast forward a couple years later and Rock would meet Busta Rhymes' brother at Uniondale High School, where he was eventually introduced to Busta Rhymes and joined his crew Flip Mode Squad. This would be where Rock would receive his first rap check and it felt like end quote robbing a bank, according to Marcy. But as Rock was getting his first taste of the fruits of his labor, other things weren't adding up. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Rock said, You just start to realize, you know what, I'm not doing my style. I had developed my own style and my own music sensibilities and preferences. Stuff that fit me, what I wanted to talk about, and what fit my voice. By 2002, Rock would take it back to the basics and link up with his Long Island comrades Mike Raw, La Ku, and Dino Brave to form the UN. At a time when hip-hop was commercially at its peak, Rock Marciano went against the grain and kept it gutter as ever. Their album was initially supposed to release on the legendary label Loud Records, but was shelved and not released until 2004 on a lesser known label. This was a time period when hip-hop was transitioning from the gritty boom bap soundscape of the 90s to records that were meant to make you move. The dope thing about Rock is, he didn't give a f He still kept it all the way gutter and didn't compromise his sound for the sake of radio spins. But shit was different back then. The internet was still trying to figure itself out, social media wasn't a word back then, and Jay Quan was telling you how to get tipsy. To make any noise in the music industry, there were gatekeepers, whether it be major labels, industry execs, or A&Rs. It was a time when it was about who you knew, and where if you wanted to get on, you had to get the boss of your label some cheesecake. Man, Puffy just told us to go to the store in Brooklyn and bring him back a cheesecake and walk. So while Fit Rifkin's SRC Records, where he would begin working on his official debut album, Mossberg. On May 4th, 2010, Rock Marciano released his debut album that would not only shake up the underground hip hop scene, but usher in a whole new era of rappers who have followed in his path. The critically acclaimed masterpiece that is Mossberg takes influences from black 70s gangster pimp films and meshes it with soulful drumless backdrops with multi syllable raps that paint a vivid picture of the gritty East Coast streets. Track number three, Whatever Whatever, is a masterclass in multi-syllable wordplay over drumless production that somehow still has your head bopping. One of my favorite parts is when Rock raps, hit with the nine, lies, sleep, time is money, pride and deceit, lies and greed, despise in the trees, cheese, wives are cheap, grind in the streets, your enemies come disguised as your peeps, lines that I read, filed to the teeth, filed from the cheap, 25,000 a key, niggas sound funny styled on me, you'll get found in a pile of leaves, nigga, that shit is hard. This album makes you feel like you're on the back blocks of New York or Philadelphia with Tim Boots and a Pele Pele jacket on, this shit is straight dope. We Do It featuring the legendary Brownsville Ka has Mars flossing over the guitar sample loop that sounds like he got a Mac 11 under his fur coat. One of my favorite tracks on the album is Snow, which really showcases Rock's insane wordplay. Let's break it down. Baby girl, my 45 don't jam. Al Pacino with a tan. Ghetto casino rolling Cielo with Vito for nothing under Racino. Nigga, we still repping the East Coast, reaching for toast like TV remotes. Spray cans where graffiti is wrote. And for what the media promotes, so I appear like a genie in smoke. And for me, it's so easy to boast, even when I'm greasy and broke in a pea coat. And this beat here is still as good as meatloaf. Sheesh. The way that Rock effortlessly squeezes in as many multi-syllable rhymes within each bar is second to none, with MF Doom only being someone in that same vein. Also the remix to Snow featuring the late great Sean Price is absolutely bananas. Riding Around gives game on how to maneuver in the concrete jungle over a sinister loop, while Panic has a dreadful bell playing under grimy drums, while Mars details the chaos of shootouts and money bags. 
the album really has no misses and still sounds fresh to this day. Songs like Pop is an absolute head knocker that is truly timeless. With minimal features and the whole album being entirely produced by Rock Marciano, it's hard not to say this is one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. In my humble opinion, of course. Two years later, Rock would release his sophomore album Reloaded, this time with help on the production side with the likes of The Alchemist and Q-Tip. The album would garner critical praise for bringing back elite lyricism and high quality instrumental compositions. Marcy Bo Coop would be rich in features with standout verses from Philly native Freeway and Brownsville Ka. What I like the most about this album is its minimalist style and production, allowing the vocal flow to be part of the instrumentation's final product. Every song on this album is like a hit of dopamine to your brain. Rock's depictions of a smooth criminal in the cold street streets of the east coast over 70 samples is nothing short of sonic bliss. Whereas Mossberg is a depiction of the grimy streets of Hempstead in Philadelphia, Rosebud's revenge is more like vivid tales of a ruthless mob underboss. His aura and demeanor when he raps is somewhat cold and many times, Rock uses dark satire in his raps. For instance, lines like me and my Uzi is like a couple spooning, or the 4-4 is a chrome with a long nose call it Ginobili add a clever humor to what is really dark misfortunes of the criminal underworld. Reloaded would come out two years later and this is where Rock would finally find his bread and butter. He put the album out directly on his website and sold it exclusively for 30 bucks a pop. Rock finally cut the middleman out and in the process became his own plug. Marciano continued this formula in the following years releasing underground gems that everybody from Drake to Jay-Z would emulate on their own projects. As Busta Rhymes put it, Rock is an architect with words and to add to that, with beats as well. Rock Marciano's artistic expression is a unique duality. He mastered the art of minimalist production, yet also mastered the science to intricate wordplay. This would all come full circle with Rock's latest project Elephant Man Bones, which in my opinion is the magnum opus of Rock's catalog as it is the epitome of neoclassical raw hip hop. It's so elegantly put together, the title track Elephant Man Bones is an utter masterpiece with Mars offering food for the spirit. Liquid Cokes, which samples George Duke's 1974 Faces in Reflection, has a cool, calm, and collected Mars rapping, he'll put you in a hospital room, and bets your legs won't move. He has stayed busy on the production side, producing Stove God Cook's Reasonable Drought in 2020, and Jay Worthy's Nothing Bigger Than The Program in 2023. Rumor has it that Rock's future projects will have him experimenting with singing and melodies, which is not surprising seeing as he sprinkled melodies all throughout his catalog. Wherever he takes it next, I'll definitely be watching. I go by the name